Hello viewers, welcome back. Thank you again for tuning into my channel. So today we've got another watch from my collection. This is a Panerai. This Panerai is a Luminor and the model reference is 00297. So this Panerai is very similar to the Panerai 88, the PAM 88. The differences between this and the 88 are that this particular watch comes with a stainless steel bracelet and a polished bezel uh, on the outside of the dial. So as a result, you've now got Panerai with a bracelet, which for me was a major draw to this particular watch. I really wanted uh, a bracelet dive watch. I really, really don't see the point in dive watches with leather straps because I absolutely hate it when I get my leather straps wet. So this particular watch is actually a proper dive watch. It's got 300 meters of water resistance and alongside having quite a decent water resistance rating, um, it's way deeper than I will ever go, by the way. So when I say decent, I mean decent in comparison to something like a planet ocean. But for me, it's a super academic comparison because I will never go 100 meters, let alone 300 meters, let alone 600 meters for a planet ocean. And don't get me start on the ultra deep, by the way, or the prop rov. Um, but I really quite like the prop rov. But anyway, um, this particular watch also has a GMT function. So that GMT function is very basic. So you don't have um, a kind of rotating bezel like you do on, say, a GMT Master II from Rolex. Um, but it does have a GMT hand that runs at half speed to the hour hand. So it, it goes around the dial once in 24 hours and you have 24 hour markings around the dial. So you can quite clearly read a second time zone. What's quite nice is that you can independently set the 24 hour hand on this particular one. So it's not like the early GMT masters from Rolex, like the 1675 and the 16700, where you, you can't actually independently adjust that 24 hour hand. On this particular model, you can, which is great. So you can tell whatever time zone you want. Um, and it's a nice clean dial, as you can see. So we've got a nice wide case of 44 millimeters. We've also got a 16 millimeter depth. So it's quite a deep watch, but it's really, really quite nice when you're wearing it on the wrist because you've got this quite nice domed crystal. So you get this kind of almost vintage look to the, to the dial because of the domed crystal. And the date function on this watch has a slight kind of um, slight magnification through a secondary dome that sits just above the, uh, the date itself, which is a nice feature, cleaner than the Rolex uh, magnification on the crystal. It's kind of applied underneath the crystal. So you get that magnification effect without it interrupting the smoothness of the, of the crystal itself. Now, this watch is quite a monster. It's it's a, it's a brand Panerai that's not really known for their subtlety. So this watch is, as I say, 44 millimeters, a big watch, 16 millimeters, a deep watch, and we've got a lug to lug here of 53 millimeters. So it, it's big in all senses. We've got a 24 millimeter lug width here. So classically Panerai, it's big all round, and you've got those kind of quite short, stubby, lugs um, that are just completely straight um, and and really suit the kind of bracelet design. It integrates nicely. It's super, super functional and you get a real feel that this is a solid piece, this watch. The flip side of it being a solid piece is that it's bloody heavy. Now, I've got some weighing scales here. So let's stick these on. And I'm wearing also a GMT, but a really nice Ebel World Timer GMT, which has a, a GMT function around the side. I'll do a review on one of these later because I love this watch. Um, so let's pop this on scale, 69 grams. This is quite a lightweight watch. It's, it's stainless steel, but it comes with a, a leather strap and 
it's not got a bracelet, so this isn't really a fair test. But just to give you a, a, a view, place your bets now about how much you think the Panerai is going to weigh. It's going to be more. 237 grams. So that's only a quarter of a kilo on your wrist. It's, it's heavy. It's big. It feels it as well. It's not one of these watches that shrink around the wrist. It's a big thing. It, you, you feel like you're wearing it when you're wearing it. Um, some people love that, of course. I'm not sure. So this was my first Panerai, and I've been kind of pleasantly surprised by how, how I started to take to the Panerai brand. And I know I've completely succumbed to marketing here. There is absolutely nothing that this Panerai shares with the original Firenze Panerais for the, the, the Paneristi admire um, so much. This is a marketing exercise. I totally know that. This, this watch is made in Switzerland. Um, it's, what, it's part of one of the biggest watch groups in the world. It is really not anything to do with Italian military. Um, and that for me is a bit of a shame but I love some of the history around it. I kind of get the story. Um, I kind of imagine a little Panerai boutique on, on the Ponte Vecchio in, in, um, yeah, in, in Italy. And it, it's kind of nice. There is something to it that, that means that the person that buys a Panerai is kind of, it's, it's, they're taken by the story or they want to buy something that's different to a Rolex and Omega. Um, and they, they're actively seeking out a watch that's unique in some sense. I love that. I'm all for that, 100%. I am so bored of Rolex and Omega and everything else. So I think there's a lot to be said for a Panerai like this. However, I've mentioned the, the dimensions and the heft of the thing. Another thing to mention is this is quite a basic movement. So this is an ETA uh, 2824 movement with a slight modification for the GMT hand of course but it's really quite a simple basic thing it beats at 28.8 thousand um, movements it, um, vibration sorry in an hour it's a run-of-the-mill easy to service but nothing special movement some of the Panerais you know you've got the JLC eight day movement in the hand wind Panerais that's that's a cool movement. You've got some of the Panerai chronographs that have a, an El Primero movement in there. They're 40 millimeters though, so if you like your bigger watches, um, they probably wouldn't work so well. Um, but I mean, Panerai do market this as their kind of their own, their own derived movement. Um, you know, when you open the back, you've got kind of Panerai and you've got, you know, I think they've referenced it as an OP movement, but it's very much an ETA, which, which is fine but it's just kind of making you aware that these are luxury brands, but they're using basic movements, something which we, you know, often find really um, with some of these, with some of these brands that, that don't perhaps have the price tag of the Rolex and Omega um, offerings. And on the price point, so these Panerais these days are coming in at kind of between three and four and a half thousand pounds, depending on where you buy them. Um, this one has a full box and papers. Uh, I, I, the, the original price tag was actually still on the watch, so they made these between about 2008 2013. This particular one is a 2009, uh, it's a UK watch, and it was £4,400 when it was new. So now it's probably worth about 4000 ish 4100 because I've literally just had this one serviced actually. And when you think about it, it's it's quite an interesting value proposition. Um, it's not a beta watch by any means. £4,000 is a lot of money to spend on a watch. It's useful. It's got a GMT function. It's easy to service. It's got an ETA movement. It's super functional. You can bang this on a table and I think the table would come off a lot worse than the watch. It's hefty. You've got a really good water resistance here. But there's something I can't, can't quite get my head around with the branding of the watch and knowing that it really was a marketing exercise from the early 2000s. I don't love that about the brand. Um, I also don't love the fact that they're just using quite basic movements for these watches. It doesn't really sit so well with me. And 
I'm not sure I, I can really live with the size of this watch, being honest. So my wrist is six and a half uh, inches. I'm moving more these days towards smaller watches. So this watch, although I've had it in my collection for only a few months because I wanted to try a Panerai, I feel like it's not really a watch that's a long-term keeper for me. Might be a bit of a shame, but that said, I'm really glad I've tried it. I'm, re I'm still a massive fan of, of Panerai's with bracelets, by the way. It's a beautiful bracelet, it's so solid and hefty. You've got some nice detailing on, on the bracelet itself with the office in Panerai. It's a butterfly blaze bracelet. Um, it also does look really good on a strap, I have to say. So for those of you that want the flexibility of adding loads of different leather straps or rubber straps, you can make these look great. Um, for me, I like dive watches to be dive watches. I've got other watches that, that um, I want to wear when I'm going out in the evening and, and things like that. So. This for me is a bit of a, a kind of, it's a bit of a strange proposition because it's so big that it, it almost becomes a bit unwearable at certain functions. It's so deep you can't fit it under a, a cuff with a, with a shirt. It's very much a kind of summer beach watch. You just kind of don't really need to think about it twice. It can handle absolutely everything. Um, solid reliable move, move, movement, you don't have to you know, baby it or anything, but it's expensive for it to be like that. I mentioned the Ploprov when I first started this video, and I think the two are quite similar actually. So the Ploprov is kind of this huge Omega, which was originally meant for um, deep sea divers. Um, and I think this Panerai sits quite nicely with that. They're big, heavy, kind of unnecessary watches, but there is a slight charm to them, but you've got to love a big watch. So for me, final thoughts are nice looking watch, not totally convinced by the modern Panerai brand, not totally convinced by the movement, probably a bit too big for any of you that have a, a smaller wrist. But if you like a watch where you can stick a, a different strap on it, rubber, leather, they look great with that. And actually, if you want something that's functional, hard wearing, you might do some diving in it. You don't want an Omega, you don't want a Rolex. Might be one to consider. Hope you found this useful. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.